Okay, the next uh, presentation is by Paweł Radzikowski. I don't, I'm not sure why I have all the Polish people here. But... <laughs> he works at the Department of Systems and Economics of Co Production, Institute of Soil Science and Plant Cultivation. Paweł does research in environmental science, and today he's going to tell us how common agricultural policy affects orthoptera diversity in Poland. Paweł, please. Uh, many thanks for the opportunity to be here. It is a great honor to present uh, before you uh, our humble agriculture research results. Uh, but uh, before this, oh, I guess it doesn't work. Maybe this one. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, I'd like to uh, dedicate this presentation for recently uh, deceased uh, Professor Anna Liana, who was a leading orthoptera researcher in Poland by the last 30 years. She also greatly contributed to our project and our personal knowledge about these insects. Um, maybe short introduction to the agriculture. Agriculture is uh, one of the uh, leading uh, factors for the orthoptera decline in Europe and the rest of the world. But is the, this factor is not the same uh, along uh, the continent. There's a huge diversification, for example, in the size of the farms. Uh, in the Poland itself is also diverse. The most of the big farms, uh, bigger than uh, 20 hectares, like here in the Netherlands, are concentrated in the northern, western part. But the rest of the Poland is characterized by very fragmented farm structure, most of them uh, below five hectares of area and also a uh, field themselves are very fragmented. Uh, farmers sometimes divide uh, fields between their children to the point some of them are very long and narrow. Uh, some, some of them are only two meters wide. Uh, in the modern times that resulted in the huge area of abundant land uh, in some regions of the Poland, which uh, coincides with the most of our orthoptera species observations. Uh, yeah. uh, agriculture in Poland and especially the land holding is characterized by mm, the huge number of the small farms. Over 70% of them is smaller than 10 hectares and the biggest one, ones uh, which uh, are above 50 hectares, consists only of 3% of all this uh, group, but they do hold 30% uh, of the land. So the, this uh, mm, Mm, the structure is not uh, that like seems is still a lot of, of great uh, fields. Um, <clears throat> uh, most of the agricultural land is actually a rubble land, about the 70%, which is not very suitable for the orthoptera insects. And uh, the only a uh, little above 20% uh, uh, is uh, grasslands and pastures. Uh, in the uh, uh, rubble land, most of this, uh, 70, over 70% 70 of this is uh, cereal itself, followed by fodder crops and uh, rapeseed. Uh, to assess the effect of the uh, agriculture and environmental schemes, um, uh, my colleague Jarek Stalenga established a project uh, for the uh, protection of the biodiversity in uh, agriculture areas and also assessment uh, of uh, different practices uh, we use many indicators, far, farmland bird index, landscape diversity, uh, floral diversity, and of course arthropods such as spiders, carabids, and orthopterans. Uh, we mostly uh, make our research in the second pillar of common agriculture policy, which is uh, dedicated to uh, environmental protection and rural development. Uh, we assessed uh, organic uh, farming on the rubble lands as well as the different variants of uh, meadow uh, management. For the control, we use uh, uh, actions from the first pillar with the only direct payments, with only uh, basic uh, good agriculture um, practices, both for the grasslands and uh, the arable lands. 
research area was placed in the eastern Poland in Lubelskie region. Uh, we had uh, the network of the monitoring on the grasslands and uh, arable lands. The method we used were uh, sweep net and uh, soil traps. Not really characteristic uh, for the um, Orthoptera research, but uh, that was the method for the collection or all of our tropods. And we unfortunately found out the abdunas of the Orthoptera in these samples was very, very low. So we have to combine all the samples uh, from a whole year, from one for whole field in the one sample. But we still uh, achieved uh, almost 100 samples from the arable lands and uh, almost 200 from uh, grasslands. Uh, the monitoring was performed between uh, 2012 and 2016. Uh, first results, I'd like to show you classical comparison organic versus conventional uh, crops. Uh, we found out the communities of the Orthoptera was, were mostly the same. Dominant species was Tetrix subulata followed by uh, field cricket. Also uh, Tetrix uh, tenuicornis, uh, Rosaliana rosei and Decticus versivorus were found in the huge numbers. Rest of the species was very unabduant. The rare species, for example, were uh, Bicolarana bicolor and Horchipus mollis. What is uh, revealant is that uh, almost all species massively increased their numbers in organic farming. There was only several ex uh, exceptions, and we, which resulted in the higher diversity of Orthoptera insects in uh, organic fields. We uh, split uh, this um, variants into the four different variants depending on the intensity of the cultivation based on the surveys with the farmers. We found out only, uh, often we found out that only uh, um, intensive conventional uh, um, cereal production is performed less than uh, organic systems, but extensive uh, conventional is still pretty good. Uh, we also take uh, soil samples to uh, assess uh, the um, presence of uh, correlation between, they can be indicator from the poor quality soils, just like a Tetrix subulata, for example, he was more present in the fields with high uh, nitrogen, so also not really balanced uh, soils. On the other hand, there were species like Rosaliana roselli and Decticus versivorus who were present only in the most fertile fields, rich in the nutrients and magnesium, for example. Uh, another part of the study was a grass, grass and assessment. The control was um, conventional middle out of the agro-environmental scheme. Uh, the actually research subject were uh, um, uh, variants with the extensive farming delay mowing uh, date and um, limited uh, fertilization, uh, bird protection program uh, with uh, no fertilization and very late uh, term, term of uh, mowing, and also free habitat uh, uh, grasslands. Uh, depend, diver, uh, they were different by uh, the level of the humidity and uh, vegetation uh, structure. Uh, what we found out actually is that the conventional uh, meadows were actually very diverse and uh, the dominant species were uh, Horchipus albomarginatus, Horchipus bigotulus, and also Steptophema grossum, uh, which was considered actually uh, at the time the rare species uh, in the extensive variant of uh, these meadows. We found huge domination of uh, Grillus campestris and Rosaliana roselli, but uh, it, uh, we also found the rare species such as uh, Metrioptera brachyptera, which were not present in the control. <laughs> Another situation is uh, in the beard uh, protection package, we, we had a huge domination of Pseudohorhipus paralleus to the point when we found uh, 700 individuals in the one uh, sample, for example. So it is like level of the uh, locust, actually. And the same situation in the Arnatarium uh, semi-dry meadows, domination of Pseudohorchipus paralleus, but a lot of cricket as well. Uh, on the Molydion uh, habitat meadows, uh, different uh, species were dominant. There was a um, Conocephalus fuscus, Homocestus uh, um, viridulus, and other species typical for the wet habitats. 
on the especially wet meadows, calcium meadows, where it was often stagnating water. Uh, the same species were dominant as uh, in the Molinion, Balp, plus Stetophema grossum. Uh, the conclusion is uh, that um, most of the uh, common species of, of Orthoptera actually declined in the agroenvironmental schemes. Uh, some uh, were uh, winners like Pseudohorhippus parleus, Grillus campestris, and Rosaliana roseli, which increased massively in the numbers, but also some less uh, common species increased in the numbers in uh, agroenvironmental scheme meadows. Uh, and uh, we also found uh, rare species such as Metioptera brachyptera, Elphistira brachyptera, and many other pedagonids only in the uh, agroenvironmental scheme meadows. Uh, um, the interesting thing was that in the semi dry meadows, when the mowing is very uh, delayed, we achieved massive numbers of uh, grasshoppers. Uh, it's especially true for the juveniles, which I could not determine. There were many, many times more than the conventional with uh, early uh, mowing. Uh, for the uh, species number, there was actually no difference between species number uh, along the experiment, for, uh, for, for exception uh, for the wet meadows, because they have a different species composition. Not all uh, species like to live there. And for the uh, Shannon diversity index, only Arenatarian semi dry meadows perform worse than others because of domination of one species and uh, the wet meadows because of different species composition. Uh, summarizing, uh, most of the Orthoptera species benefit from the uh, common agricultural policy, especially agroenvironmental schemes and uh, organic farming, but some of them benefit more and uh, achieve uh, like very massive numbers. But the most important conclusion is we found rare species only in the protected uh, meadows. For the future plan, we're planning to submit publication for the uh, agronomy journal uh, when we will pre present our research uh, on uh, grasshoppers in uh, organic cereal. As well, we already submitted a proposal for the big project with remote sensing of the pastures when the on-ground uh, monitoring of the grasshoppers will be performed on the large scale, of course, if the project will succeed. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope you like it, and I am uh, open for the questions. Thank you very much, Paolo. Okay, we have some minutes for questions. Who has got a question? Axel <laughs> Horkirch. Um, I remember when I was in Poland 30 years ago, I was on a very small field, maybe potato field or something, and I was very surprised to see so many orthoptera on a cereal field, which if you go to, to northern Germany, you find nothing. It's, it's completely empty. You may find a tetagonia at the edge or so, but, but not, not in cropland. Um, so is this, uh, as I've understood, is, it's still a case that you have many orthoptera also on, on fields and not only in meadows. And That's is, right, yes. And isn't, isn't there a risk that this may change with the agricultural intensification? Yes, it is a great risk and uh, because, uh, fortunately, uh, the agricultural policy by the many, many years um, is uh, supporting small farmers to farm. Otherwise, we will we, we'll be left uh, right now only with the uh, abundant land or very sm uh, big farms. Um, so, is many direct and uh, indirect uh, effects of these uh, policies for the orthoptera insects, most of them, I think, uh, positive. Uh, Thomas Tunagratke. Um, I, I, it's quite unexpected that the differences are not so high between uh, patches with funds and without funds. And can it be possible, I think this uh, last statement is, goes in this direction, that the main factor is still the small size of the patches. Because if you have a small conventional patch and uh, a small organic uh, field, the uh, 
to have more uh, effects of, of, of border and of, uh, of uh, fields just beneath and so, so that uh, can um, compensate for instance uh, the use of pesticides in, in conventional fields or so and still have quite uh, good numbers of autoptera uh, there so that the main key factor is really the, the size of the fields for the diversity in, in, in these Polish agricultural systems. Actually, there was a significant difference between organic and conventional. Maybe I didn't mark it in the right way, but it was. Uh, the difference between extensive uh, and conventional and organic was not significant because uh, the extensive is only like sieving and collecting without any measures of the production. It is like really dominative. The size for the fields, which I presented before, it could be a little bit misleading because on our research, we uh, only choose the meadows and fields no smaller than one hectare and no bigger than uh, three. So the, the, the differences between the size of the was not uh, that like in the introduction, actually. Sorry for this. Thank you, thank you very much, Paolo.